Hi again. So um, today we're going to take that tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone pattern that we learned about in the last video, which is one of the most basic things uh, that we need to get in our heads uh, about music theory and create Wake Me Up. So let's start by recording a D major scale, which is exactly what we've been dealing with before, except everything's been shifted up by a tone, which is the same thing as two um, steps on a sequencer grid. So STTTS looks like that on in sequencer grid terms. And then what we're going to do is write out the letter names for all the, the notes of the D major scale. The only thing that's new is um, the idea of using a sharp, which is one of the black notes. Um, the key of D major has got two of these things in it. All it means is that it's, it's the notes we have to change in order to keep conforming to that TTS, TTTS formula. That's literally all it means. That's all you need to worry about for now. Here you can see um, note D is obviously note one, E is two, etc., etc. And then just for real clarity, we're gonna um, write out um, what each interval between each note a tone or a semitone so you can see exactly how everything's spaced and then from here we'll um, talk about generating chords in exactly the same way that we did in the previous video only this time we're going to jump right into a tune and see how the chords are ordered voiced inverted etc so you'll need to have those concepts that we've been discussing already at your fingertips so feel free to refer back to videos one two and three for these so we're, 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 we've got to talk about intervals tones semitones triads um again at the the sequencer page um see how tts ttts looks on a grid and it's the same deal really one note three and note five stick them all together and you get chord one d major triad as opposed to c major triad like we had before uh chord two is an e minor triad so instead of a d minor triad which is what we had in the key of c so the, the actual order of chord types always remains the same so it's always major minor minor major major minor and then diminished again five there g uh I beg your pardon, chord four, G major. What we're gonna do now is record the second note of each chord by layering another note layer on top of the first note, note layer. So we've gone note three, four, five, six, etc., etc. So now we've got a bunch of third intervals. And now we're gonna finally put the top one on. So we end up with a whole bunch of triads. So we've started with note five from the scale, we've gone six, seven, eight, nine, etc., etc. So now we've got seven different chords, and we've ended up with another D major at the top, an octave higher than the first one. So what does that look like when you actually write it out in letter names? Um, it looks like this. So it's just starting the same sequence again but from the third note um, as i say the sharp thing is nothing too much to worry about um, the distance between e and f um, is if you look refer back to a keyboard you'll see that there's no note in between e and f so e and f is only a semitone even though they're both what they call natural notes um, a semitone between them so in order to make a tone which is what we need for our tts formula we need to sharpen the f to to add another note in between so that's why we've got an f sharp it's as, it's as basic as that so f sharp is one of the black notes from the keyboard with similarly with c sharp at the end of the scale um, to get from b to c you'd only have a semitone so uh, you need to sharpen the c again um, and that's how you end up with a semitone at the end of the scale that would lead you back to the tonic, the D. Um, this that, That's another thing. There's, if you really want to go into the theory side, there's this whole system of note naming, which is based on tonic and dominant and subdominant and mediant and leading note and this kind of thing. 
but that's slightly beyond the scope of this course. Um, we can certainly discuss that in a future course, but that, that's that's for someone who wants to get into the theory for its own sake uh, from, from uh, the point of view of what we're trying to achieve here. So here are the, um, the harmonized triads of the scale once you crank them out from the from adding stacking thirds as we've just been doing um, how you generate all the chords for the key um, and we're just writing them out as as they would be written on a chord chart which is a good thing to be able to do um, little m for minor maj for major um, DIM or a little degree sign for diminished is is uh, the acceptable one. Um, much about diminished just because we haven't found a use for it in any of the material that we've been covering yet, but we'll get to that that uh, at some point. Um, so those seven different chords look like that on the grid. What we're going to do now is get rid of the ones that aren't in the tune, basically. So are going to choose four of them which are the, the chords from the song wake me up um they're not in the right order yet what we've done is we've we've found chord one four five and six and we've chopped out all the rest i'm going to reorder them so we're going to end up with a sequence which is incredibly common in pop music at the moment five six four that we're going to end up with one five six four and variations of one five six four are the most common progression at the moment we're just trying to um smooth it out in that voice leading manner that we discussed in the in the video about inversions highlighting here chord one chord four chord five and chord six that's d major G major, A major, and B minor. Um, but then we are going to reorder them on the paper as well as on the sequencer. So we end up with this one, five, six, four. It's about just how common this chord progression is. Uh, go and look up uh, the Axis of Awesome on YouTube. Um, they do a little spoof on. Um, all the fact that all these songs are being created with with this one chord progression it's pretty clever um so we're going to now uh, take and we're going to put it back to front so it, it's the same sequence just going to be starting from a different point so instead of one five six four it's going to be six four one five and then we'll smooth out any of the what the voices any of the notes and the chords that stand out so we can make them as smooth as possible so there we have uh, six four one five going back to the voice leaning idea um being able to see everything on the grid is actually a quite a neat way of being able to do this as you can see um i just took that note down an octave F sharp for the B minor chord and now I'm just going to double that B minor chord just because that's that's how it works in the tune the second chord so just shortening the length and doubling the the number of times it's played off the length twice twice the speed So obviously it's, it's kind of a pretty basic stripped down version of what you hear in the song. Notice I just tweaked the last 
chord, or rather the first um, version of the last chord. I've made it into a chord three inversion, um, just, just trying to follow the song a bit more closely. Um, it's, it's almost the same chord, it's just got one note difference, chord three. Chord three and chord five have got two out of the three notes in common. So that was obviously this, the, a bit closer to how the actual recording sounds. So um, hopefully you can you can trace these steps about how we get from a really basic scale to this tune. I've just written out the chord sequence as as heard. It's just a few tips about how to. Um, how to write them out correctly for a for a chord chart. So B minor, G major, major, which is the tonic, and then F sharp minor to A. Hope you find that useful. Thanks for listening.